Black men, black women, black kids, we are, we are terrified. Stop, stop, stop that. Charlie, oh, stop it, stop. If we're right, people lose homes, people lose jobs, people lose retirement savings, people lose pensions. You know what I hate about fucking banking? It reduces people to numbers. Here's a number, every 1% unemployment goes up, 40,000 people die, did you know that? Unemployment rate declined for adult men, for adult women, teenagers, uh, also declined for African Americans, which had been uh, stagnant the prior month, Hispanics. Oh, no. did you know that? No, I didn't know that. We were just excited. Just don't fucking dance. A little sensationalized. I know. I won't apologize because, well, that is America. Kia ora te whanau, ko Iria Taku Ingoa, ko Generation Invest to Mahi. My name is Iria and if you're new to the channel, welcome. You chose a good first video and to my 39 subscribers, 89 followers and 71 strong community, welcome back. Today we're going to be learning about Forex or Foreign Exchange. I'm going to be answering questions like what is the Foreign Exchange? How does it work? Compare costs with Hatch, Stake and Sharesies. What tax implications can it have? And what is important when investing? By way of definition, foreign exchange is the conversion of one currency to another. Now if I do happen to miss any of your questions about the foreign exchange or the market or currency exchange, do leave your questions in the comment section below. But without further ado, let's get into it. How it works. Companies need to buy goods and services from other countries, just like we used to when we used to travel, which seemed like so long ago. The difference being is that we would exchange a few hundred dollars and companies would exchange a few hundred million dollars. This changes the price of a currency because the higher the demand, the higher the price. To own an American company or fund, you need to trade in US dollars which is a seamless transition to a case study we can look into now. Say we had a thousand New Zealand dollars and we wanted to discover which investing platform will provide us with the best value. Now, full disclosure, the pricing and how it works on exchanging from New Zealand dollars to US dollars are on the respective websites of each platform. So please make sure you check that out before investing. So if you had 1,000 New Zealand dollars and you're converting it to US dollars, Shares will charge you a $4 exchange fee, stake $6.64 and hatch $3.31. These are the current exchange rates at the time that I completed this video. Keep in mind these are subject to change. Once that money is converted to US dollars, based on that amount, Shares would charge a $3.30 buying fee to purchase a company fund or share. Stake wouldn't charge a fee at all and Hatch would charge a flat $3 fee. Simplified, the final standees would look like this. With $1,000 New Zealand, that would be converted into a $659.98 US dollar investment. Shares comes in at second at $656.84 and Hatch comes in at $656.41. Now this case study is a very quick and simplified version of what it looks like if you're converting a thousand New Zealand dollars into US dollars and then investing that in one of the platforms. A few key things to understand is the amount to exchange, so platforms change to a percentage versus a flat fee if the amount is greater than a certain amount. Exchange rate, this can change daily. Speed to fund your US dollar wallet. Providers will have additional costs if you wish to express your fund. And finally, costs when you choose to sell. When you wish to realize your investment and sell the stock, you'll then need to convert it back from US dollars to New Zealand dollars. So when you sell a share, there are typically costs and charges that are involved as well, which I didn't dive into. We now move over to tax. So I'll be the first one to tell you that I'm no tax expert. There's a disclaimer in every video that any content or information on this channel cannot be considered tax or personalized advice. So I will refer you back to your accountant to get that personalized 
advice where they can consider your individual circumstances or I'm sure IID will be happy to listen to any questions that you may have regarding tax as long as you're happy to listen to Dave Dobbin and call him loyal. In saying that you do have a responsibility as an investor to have a reasonable level of understanding when it comes to tax here in New Zealand and abroad. You may have heard of the term W8BEN, which is an American application form lodged on your behalf when you sign up. This is sent to the IRS, which is the IRD equivalent here in New Zealand. Typically, tax will be paid on your behalf on any dividends that you make. Any interest that you earn on capital growth in a stock will be subject to your RWT. You pay tax on interest and dividends you earn from bank accounts and investments you have in New Zealand. You also pay tax on income from overseas accounts and investments. This is residence withholding tax, or RWT. Your payer, bank or fund manager, or in this case, shares ease, stake or hatch, or sometimes a custodian, deducts residence withholding tax from your interest or dividend payment before they pay you. Now, it is also good to understand imputation credits, but again, because I'm no expert, I'd have to refer you back to the experts there at IRD or an accountant. I also wanted to briefly touch base on GDP or gross domestic product, which is the official measurement of economic growth. Now, a company's performance, therefore stock price, will have a larger impact compared to the quarterly GDP numbers a country may release. However, awareness is all I want to create. We can see the frightening numbers shown here. US GDP down 31%, Australia down 7%, and last quarter only down 1.6% here in New Zealand, with updated numbers to be posted on September 16th. So that's foreign exchange, all things to consider. If you're investing in pennies like me, then you've got to start somewhere. Although understanding foreign exchange is important, company analysis and data research should be your primary goal on whether you choose to invest in a company or not. If you watch my Investing for Beginners video, is the American company in your circle of competence? Do you understand the business? Assess management. Are they making good business decisions? Does the US stock have an economic moat? And if possible, can you buy at a margin of safety? If you follow my value investing style, your aim is to grow wealth over a several number of years, to support the whanau, buy a home, maybe start your own business. Overall, achieving financial freedom. Hey, Cornetta.